All right. Anytime I get the chance to talk with this man, I'm going to jump all over it. It's one of my favorite people in the space, the lead play-by-play voice for the UFC. One of the best play-by-play guys in all of sports, in my opinion, and part of the Anakin Florian podcast. Fellow New Englander who avoided the last blizzard because he moved down south. Very smart decision. Let us say hello once again to Mr. John Anik. John, great to see you, sir. How are you? Always a pleasure, my man. I get anxiety from those weather reports, even though I'm in sunny South Florida. But I got to tell you, it was 34 degrees here about a week ago. That is far and away as cold as it has ever been in South Florida since I moved here late 2014. So make of that what you will, but we don't like to have to turn on the heat in South Florida. And we had to do that three straight days. Yes, I'm in South Carolina now and our heat didn't work. We moved here in August. Our heat did not work at all. We just got it fixed. So we finally got some heat and now it's like 75 degrees outside again. So just in time, John, just in time. You got beautiful weather there. Good for you getting to South Carolina. Yeah, man, we got to do what we got to do. We got to avoid these blizzards. So normally, John, you and I would just hit record and we would rap about MMA and the comings and goings of the UFC, which we'll do a little bit of that. But you're also here with an exciting opportunity for the fans, which we're going to get into in a moment. But first, John, Tom Brady is officially retired. The report surfaced. It was official on Monday. The social media post, all of that. Your, Your reaction to this whole thing, because I'm dying to know. So my initial reaction is that he's going out on top, which is crazy to me that he would leave before we saw anything resembling regression. And I think he kind of got to the point where he has mastered this position and reading defenses to such an extent that he could probably keep his body healthy for another three to four years. You know, I would hate to sit here and call him a specialist like a kicker, right? But he has mastered that job and his craft to such an extent that he's minimized the damage, bro. Like look at his last game. The last touchdown pass of his career was a beautiful deep ball that most of the quarterbacks in the NFL right now, whether they're 24, 34, 44, still can't throw. So it's crazy that he would lead the league in passing yards his final year. Um, But I think it's time. You know, I think anybody who's a father and you can certainly speak to this, you know, there is a price to be paid. And as somebody who's away a hundred nights a year myself, I don't know if I can do this forever. Yeah, I got my dream job, but it's certainly not my daughter's dream job to have me gone 100 nights a year. Or maybe it is. Maybe she's not telling me the truth. But I'm happy for Tommy. I'm happy that his last season was a successful one. And, um, you know, he's a big UFC fan. I wouldn't be surprised to see him at Covington Mosquito coming up on March 5th. Yes, that would be amazing to see. I know people aren't watching this for Tom Brady talk. They're here for UFC talk. So let's talk about this incredible contest put forth by the fine folks at Modelo, the official beer of the UFC, teaming up with yourself, along with our friends at DraftKings for an opportunity at what really looks to be the ultimate UFC experience for fans of the sport and the product. This is amazing stuff, John, if you would care to expound on this contest and this opportunity and what these fans could, could win. Bro, thank you. This is insane. So Robert Whitaker and Israel Adesanya are fighting in nine days, okay? And maybe we'll have time to get to that. But this is the ultimate grand prize that Modelo and DraftKings have put together. You know, Modelo, obviously, longstanding official beer of the UFC. You've heard me say that line, brew for those with a fighting spirit a million times. And for me, you know, my brand has kind of become synonymous with Modelo because of the game bread knockout of Ben Askren, right? When I said this fight clock is brought to you by Modelo, right? That whole thing, right? <laughs> so I'm honored to be a part of anything involving Modelo. But, bro, they are giving away a grand prize, right? Whoever gets this opportunity is going to not just get to go to one pay-per-view with floor seats or two, you're getting floor seats to 10 pay-per-views. Like when we think about the ultimate grand prize or a Super Bowl sweepstakes, you think about, oh, maybe you go to the AFC championship game, you go to the Super Bowl, you go to March Madness, bro. The winner is getting two floor seats to every pay-per-view for a calendar year. There's all sorts of behind the scenes stuff as well with me meeting the broadcast team, getting your own walkout. Uh, It's an amazing package, but obviously I'd be burying the lead if I didn't shout from the rooftops that you're getting two floor seats to 10 pay-per-views. You're probably going to see 15 championship fights in a calendar year. Pretty insane. Did I see that this is free to enter? It's It's a free contest, right? Free contest. And you don't have to be in a DraftKings state all 50 states. This is United States based, but you don't need to be in a state where you can legally bet on sports. The contest is free. uh, And ultimately the grand prize winner will be whoever uh, puts forth the best lineup on April 9th for UFC 273 in Jacksonville, Florida. But whoever ends up 
winning this opportunity is going to be on the road with the UFC essentially for a year and uh, going to be in my hotel room when I'm doing voiceovers. I'm going to get to know these people pretty, uh, pretty intimately. And I'm excited about that. I was going to ask what, because it said behind the scenes, look at your pre-event rituals and you do a lot of different things to prepare for these cards. Are the fans basically going to be there for the whole ride with you? Just, yeah, it's I, a, mean, I mean, not it's the whole ride, but most of it. Hopefully they're not John Anik haters because they're not going <laughs> to like all this, but no, yes. I mean, Thursday, as long as we get permission from one of our athletes, we've never done this before. The winners are going to be in one of our fighter meetings and those are all off the record and nothing that is said there can be used until the broadcast. So a fan's going to get that opportunity. They'll be with me in my room as I'm doing voiceovers. They'll be with me on the ESPN set when I host UFC Live on Friday, behind the scenes with me at the ceremonial weigh-in. Uh, and then obviously I'll be trotting them around on Saturday night to come to the dressing room and see everything else. So uh, the behind the scenes stuff is insane. It's things that we have never offered UFC fans before, but certainly the Modelo promotion is largely rooted in getting two floor seats for 10 pay-per-views in a year um, it's just insane, man. It's totally insane. This type of packaging. I had to like double check with Modelo to make sure that they were indeed doing two floor seats for 10 consecutive pay-per-views. Wild man. How, how do people sign up for this? So you go to draftkings.com slash Modelo, go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, and you can find all the contest messaging. It opened on February 1st and, uh, runs right through UFC 273 on April 9th. Amazing contest. Well, I do have to add you, but you brought up UFC 271. You brought up February 12th in Houston, Texas. We got Adesanya Whitaker. I love this fight so much, Sean. It's flying under the radar because everyone remembers the first fight, right? Adesanya stops Whitaker. Second round, incredible moment. Whitaker has earned his way back with three straight wins. I spoke with him recently. His head is in the right place. Wins and losses, of course, they matter, John. And he'd love to leave Houston with the title. But the most important thing to Robert Whitaker is leaving Houston with the feeling of satisfaction that he left his best effort inside that octagon, which he did not do the first time. He admits that bad headspace, et cetera. Your thoughts on this rematch for the middleweight title, because this just checks off all the boxes for me. It really does. I mean, it's a dream matchup and it's a rematch. There's a little bit of heat on it. And I think you set it up beautifully in terms of Robert Whitaker's preparation. And he is obviously been ubiquitously regarded as one of the hardest workers in the room, in the game for a long time. But that doesn't mean that every training camp is optimal. I mean, let's not pretend that he doesn't have three, if not four children under the age of 10, right? There are a lot of different variables. And when everything in your life isn't completely aligned perfectly, sometimes that can sort of rear its ugly head when it comes to a training session. And when you're asking a lot of your body two and three a days for eight or 12 weeks, it can be a lot, but this all indications are has been an optimal training camp for Robert Whitaker. Israel Adesanya is certainly not blind to the fact that this fight was probably going to come around again. He's never lost in the weight class. And I think anytime you have a championship fight that is as anticipated as their first meeting that ends relatively quickly, you feel a little bit shortchanged. I mean, I went out of there without a shadow of a doubt thinking that Israel Adesanya was, as I said, the undisputed king of the middleweights, but I'm looking for finality. And I think Izzy is too. So I think we're going to get a longer fight. Uh, um, obviously, there was a huge backdrop with 55,000 people. It'll be a few less this time around. It'll be stateside. But um, this is a fight that had to happen. And uh, and I'm excited that both guys are healthy and we sit here about a week away now. Yeah, the timing is great. I'm glad they didn't. A lot of times you, you get one win, you get right back to the rematch. I think this, this kind of milked itself perfectly. Yeah. Here we are three fights later, stars align. And not only is that fight on the card, we got Derek Lewis versus Tai Tuivasa. I mean, how much fun is this fight, John? Lewis back in Houston, which is kind of surprising considering all the pressures that he put upon himself fighting in front of his home crowd when he fought Cyril Gaon. But here we are back in Houston. This fight is going to be fireworks, is it not? Yeah, and I'd imagine Mick Maynard went to Derek Lewis and he said, all right, good news, bad news, good news, three-round fight, co-main event on pay-per-view. It's not going to be a five-round fight. And I know Derek Lewis would rather sign a bout agreement for three versus five. But then, of course, Mick said, yeah, bad news, though, Houston, Texas, right? <laughs> it is very interesting to me because I will never forget our fighter meeting with Derek Lewis before he fought Cito Gan for the UFC Interim Heavyweight Championship. And he was kind of broken before that fight, leaning on Daniel Cormier for any advice that DC might have in terms of how to handle his emotions fighting at home. I think he's liberated by the lack of championship stakes here. And I think 
Although I wouldn't say that Tai Tuivasa is a meat and potatoes fighter, but I do think the stylistic challenge is something that Derek Lewis can certainly wrap his head around. I think he thinks the matchup is favorable. But yeah, I'll admit to being surprised to see Derek Lewis make it a quick turn to go back to Houston, just given all that hometown pressure that he's talked about. But I mean, I think we all felt like it was an eventuality that they were going to get the two most colorful, charismatic guys in the division, uh, in the octagon together. And um, I would take the under two and a half rounds. I guess we'll see. Uh, that's a good bet right there. Of course, next one, next month, we got Covington Mazadal. The rivalry will hopefully be settled. A lot of bad blood, a lot of history between these two guys at UFC 272. Five round main event with a lot of heat on it, John. And you're going to be right there calling it. Your thoughts on this matchup? So I didn't get anxious when you asked me about Whitaker Adesanya. I get anxious when you ask me about <laughs> this fight. And in the best of ways, it's just me as a sports fan thinking about them actually making the walk. Because when there is heat on a matchup, as there most definitely is here, it elevates everything for the fighters, for the fans, for the broadcasters. Like if you ask me, would I rather a fight be like the ultimate sportsmanship hugging before the third round? Or do I want them to hate each other? I would lean certainly towards them hating each other. And I've sat behind Covington and Masvidal on an airplane when they were buddy buddies sitting next to each other. I mean, they weren't just friends, Michael. They were boys, man. You know, so obviously that's a very unique backdrop to this fight. It's hugely high stakes in terms of the welterweight division. We're going to get a lot of clarity at 170 pounds. But candidly, I have to say this to you as my friend, like, I'll believe this fight happens when I see it. Like, let's get to March, right? Like, it seems too good to be true, does it not? It seems like Habib and Tony, like, it's too good to be true. Until they're in the octagon on March 5th or weighing in on March 4th, I'm not going to believe it. But cautiously optimistic that we get there. I always thought that way about seeing Nick Diaz fight again, and then we saw him make the walk. So now I feel like anything is possible now, John. Absolutely anything. Yeah. No, and, and again, I think it's... Very interesting stylistically because a lot of people feel like Covington is going to be a five to one favorite and has all the advantages in terms of where this fight is going to take place. Um, I like the fact that it's going to be in the 30 foot octagon at T-Mobile Arena. Sometimes people think I make too much of that, but I do think the little guy favors the grappler. So I think for Masvidal, better to have this fight in a 30 footer. Um, but yeah, man, it's just... Uh, it's fascinating. There are a lot of different layers to it. And uh, if Covington is going to get a third crack at Usman, who presumably is going to fight Leon Edwards next, this is a fight he absolutely has to win. And I think the same can be said for Masvidal. Whoever loses this fight, probably never going to fight for the belt. Again. Last question. I want to get your take on this because we just saw France and Gano fight Cyril Gane. It's not where, where you think we're going with this, John, I promise you. But at the heading into that fifth round, it's two to two. This fight has just has not been the fight we expected. A lot of heart shown by the champion, France Ngannou. And Eric Nixick just says everything that needs to be said. I trust you. I believe in you. We've worked so hard for this. And then he goes out there and just finishes the job and retains the title. I know you got a million things going on sitting at the broadcast. I know I got, I have goosebumps just talking about that yeah. speech right now, John. Watching it at home, I was just floored by it. But you're sitting there not far away from these guys. You're trying to, pay attention, all this emotion going on around you from an entire night of fights. What is that like for you to hear these types of moments heading into the, the fifth and final championship round of a heavyweight title fight? Yeah. I mean, it's audio and a moment that will always stick with me. And if you don't know Eric Nixick, he was a very accomplished football player in high school and collegiately, not a lifelong martial artist. And look at him now. He's one of the best head coaches in mixed martial arts. And obviously we could talk about his bodily sacrifice in terms of being a mitt holder and everything that he brings to the table. I mean, he has held pads and counseled hundreds of strikers, I would think, on the roster at this point in time, at least dozens at this point. But his relationship with Francis Ngannou is on a totally different level. I mean, his son essentially is the godson of Francis Ngannou. Their families are intertwined. And to be able to impart that type of messaging in a critical setting like that with a world championship on the line, um, you got to have a real good relationship with a guy. And I think with respect, it was juxtaposed against a kind of panicky corner and Fernand Lopez not necessarily knowing what to say to his athlete. Granted, we didn't get the full 60 seconds from Fernand Lopez. And certainly, you know, he's a guy who was honored with a coach of the year on our podcast. We have a lot of respect for Fernand Lopez, but every chord that Nick Sick needed to hit in terms of maximi maximizing those 60 seconds he hit. And 
I think he deserves a lion's share of the credit for what Ngannou was able to accomplish that night. Doing Cooper deserves credit. Francis deserves credit. He does a lot of his own game planning, but Nick Sick is the key messenger, and he always seems to be getting the right message to Francis at the right time. What a moment that was, and you have the chance to experience these moments for yourself. Ten of them, as a matter of fact. Floor side, cage side seats, a possibility. You'd see 10 papers. You get to basically travel the road with the UFC, sit cage side for all these big moments, hang out with John Anik, the ultimate UFC fan experience brought to you by the fine folks over at Modelo and DraftKings and John Anik. Contest going on right now, right through UFC 263. So get in there. Do not miss out on this. John, appreciate the time as always, man. Great stuff here and uh, excited to hear your voice next weekend at UFC 271. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate your time as always, and uh, we will talk soon, I'm sure.